Hello YouTube, Xcity here. Today we are going to solve APT, a 50-point machine on Hectobox, which involves getting the IPv6 address via MSRPC, credential spraying and reading the box's registry remotely. For root, we force authentication of the box's machine account to our box, capture it with responder, crack it and then use secret stump to obtain the administrator hash. So after the initial port scan, um, we can see that we have port 80 and 135, uh, which is Windows RPC and the web server. So let's have a look at the website first. So here we have this gigantic hosting site. And basically all of the site contents are, to my knowledge, just default text. Um, there's nothing really in here besides the gigantic hosting name, which will be useful later on. So the only thing we are left basically is this 135 port, which is MSRPC. And if you search a bit for that, eventually you will find this IOXID resolver tool from Mubix, uh, which allows you to get the IPv6 address um, of the box. So that's something we're going to do now. Um, I already downloaded it here. Um, just clone it and then run it. And as you can see, we got the IPv6 address here. And what we're going to do is to add it to our hosts file because a lot of tools can't handle the syntax um, if you want to use the address directly. I'm just going to call it apt6. So we have one for the IPv4 address and one for the IPv6 address. And now we can actually scan it again. And what we can see now is that we got a lot of open ports. So that was pretty good. We can see this gigantic hosting um, name again. Um, we can see we have Kerberos, so it's probably the main controller. We have LDAP, um, we have SMB. So lots of interesting ports to explore now. So the first thing I'm going to explore here is um, SMB. So we're going to list um, the shares with SMB client. We can just use any username or password because it allows anonymous login. And um, I noticed if you would now use SMB client to connect to the share, you sometimes would get timeout errors. So what I'm going to use instead is SMB client.py from Impacket, which um, turned out to be a bit more stable. So now we can use the shares command to list the shares. Um, we can use the backup share. And we can see that there's this backup.zip file, which we are going to get. All right, we got the file. So let's move it to this file subfolder and try to unzip it. And we can see it needs a password. So we can use zip to John to get a hash. And now we can use John to crack it. And because I already cracked this, you're going to have to call it like that with dash dash show. And we can see the password here is I love you so much. And now we can unzip it. And what we get here is this registry folder where the security and system file um, from a box and the ntts.dit and um, what we can do with these files is actually use secrets dump to dump the hashes. And normally you would use secrets dump on remote um, systems. At least that's how I use it usually. But you can also use it if you get these files somehow. So here's the command. Um, just give it a system and security file and the NTDS file and specify that you want to do it locally. And then I'm just going to store that in the hashes file. Um, actually, oh yeah, I didn't change the registry folder. So let's do that again. And you can see this works. Um, we get a lot of information from these files, basically dumping all the hashes. So um, that's it. Let's up this hashes file here. And we can see that this is a huge dump. Um, 
this is literally thousands of lines of text here. So one would think we might be able to use one of these hashes or, or users to authenticate, but we will see that this isn't really the case here. So first things first. So we got this huge name of users. So what we want to do is confirm whether these users actually exist on the box. And the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go for the list of hashes. Um, just select the first column, which is the usernames. Um, grab the ones that start with letters, um, because there's also special characters here. And these lines we do not want. And deduplicate them into this users.txt file. And clean it up a bit here at the top. But other than that, I think it looks pretty good. Huge list of users. And usually how I would um, confirm that they actually exist is using curb root um, user enum like that. And it will just go through all these users in the list and try to authenticate via Kerberos to the target. You can see that it worked for the machine account and for the administrator account. But after a moment, we get this error. And basically, we have like 50 or 60 usernames that can try and then it will just error out and stop. And I didn't really figure out why that's the case. Um, if I were to restart it now, it would again die after 50 or 60 or so. And to get around this issue, I basically split the user's file into a lot of smaller files. And as you can see now, we have all these uh, smaller files here, which just have a couple of usernames. And now what I did is just um, a loop. Basically, go through all the files, do the same we did above um, with these uh, smaller files and do a small sleep and start over again um, when the error occurs. And also I use grab for valid username so we don't get um, so much spam in the output. And as you can see, it still works. We still got the usernames here as an output. So let's wait a bit. So I'm going to stop that here because the interesting user is the one that was just found as Henry.Winson. I'm going to save that here. And out of all these users in the dump, this is the only one which actually exists on the box. And um, what I thought would be a good idea is to go into our hashes list. Um, Winson, here he is and take this hash and actually try to authenticate with this user um, using WinRAM, using crackmap exec. Using get TGT. But all of these fail. So this hash is actually useless. So the basic idea here is um, that one of the other hashes from another user will work for this Henry.Winston account, which basically means that um, we have password reuse across different users. Um, I guess in some cases, um, this could be the case, like imagine if support would set a default password, and of course multiple users can have the same one then, but in general, I wouldn't expect this to occur. Well. What we need to do is, first of all, get all the hashes in a nice list. So let's do that. We're going to go for the fourth column here, which is the actual hashes, um, deduplicate and save them in this hashes.txt file. And then we do some manual cleanup just here at the top and also at the bottom. And now we have a really nice list of hashes. I didn't find too many tools that can actually spray these, um, but the author has a tool called Hairspray, which goes in this direction. Um, but it's not quite the solution because we can give it a list of users and a single hash, um, but not um, a list of hashes. So you would have to loop that or modify the script. Um, in my case, um, the script was modified
So this hash spray.py is actually this file with a small modification. So it actually goes through all the hashes and tries them out one by one. And you can find the script um, in the description below. So let's um, run the script. I'm going to copy this file over here real quick. And then run it. So let's try this. I'm going to copy this hashes.txt file into the local directory real quick. And then we are just going to run this hash spray.py script, which will go through all the password hashes and try to log in with the username, handle.vinson, and the hash. And after a long wait, we finally get a success message here. Um, we found the hash. So we look for the hash here. This um, ain't default user has actually the password Henry Winston has now on the box. So we can do the same thing we did before, basically trying evil winner. Um, Won't work. Trying crack map exec, and that one will fail too. And the only thing that will succeed here. Oh, sorry. Not didn't want to use that one again. Um, we can use get tgt.py to um, get a Kerberos ticket for the user. So that way we know that the hash is actually working. So now that we got this valid hash um, of the user and we learned that we can make Kerberos tickets, we could try to request uh, service tickets. And um, when I originally did the box, um, this was exactly what I was trying, um, trying to talk to SMB, to RPC, get to WinRM with Kerberos. Um, but uh, in the end, you will have no luck. Um, you can connect to some of these services, um, but there isn't anything that would help to continue um, on this box. So what the author actually intended was to read the remote registry, which um, to my understanding only works if the user has an active session on the target. So in this case, we would be able to open rec edit on a Windows box, connect to a remote machine, and then um, just read the registry. Um, but in this case, we are going to do it from Kali. So I already prepared it here. You can basically run rec.py, give it the username, the box, the hash, and tell it to query the um, HK users hive. And this will dump the whole HK users hive, which will take a long time. Um, but if it finishes, um, we will actually um, be able to find some clear text credential in there and be able to win a RAM onto the box and read the user flag. So after a moment, um, the registry dump is finished and we can just grab for this um, gigantic name we had in the website earlier. And here you can see that we actually have a new username and a password. Yeah, we can connect to the box and read the user flag. So when this box was released, there was actually no hint at what to do. and Basically, no one found this uh, in over a week until Hack the Box actually released a hint here. And um, the way we can find this hint, and I'd suggest to do this on every box, is just to recursively list the home directory of the user we have and scroll through it. That's something I always do. And here we can see, um, actually, that's just a PowerShell history. We're going to read that. So what we see here is that someone um, entered the administrator credentials and then changed the registry value, um, setting this LM compatibility level to two. We have to look in the Microsoft documentation to find out what that means. And here we can see um, some article about LAN manager authentication levels. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see that two means that client devices use MTLM v1 authentication. 
this is pretty interesting because NTLM v1 is insecure, can be cracked. Um, so this is, this is interesting, um, especially since this was explicitly placed after no one found anything on this box. And the basic idea is that we want to solicit the machine account of the box to authenticate to our box and then capture the challenge with Responder. So how can we uh, force this authentication? Um, one way I know of um, is we can use Windows Defender and have it scan a remote share and it will actually use the machine account to scan it, um, which is a pretty big vulnerability, I think. And also this only works on this box and not on later boxes. So I think um, it's something that has been patched. But um, this is actually what we're going to try. I heard this is not the intended way, so maybe um, you can find some other write-up or the official one, maybe um, what was actually uh, supposed to happen here. So let's run Responder. First of all, because we want to crack this challenge later on, um, we have to change this from random to the string. How do I know that? Well, we want to use the site here, uh, crack.sh, to crack it. And it has a, a short explanation what you need to do. And that basically says exactly that. You need to change the challenge to what I want here. So you can submit it to the website. So I did that exactly that. Then we are just going to run it uh, with the dash dash lm command. And now the only thing left to do is to use uh, Defender to scan our box. Um, but you can do like that. We run the mp cmd run.exe say it's scan type free, which is uh, basically an uh, on-demand scan and specify our box here. Um, actually, first of all, because I did it before, I'm just going to lead, delete my responder database here. So we can see it. And you can see that we got a response here. And the way we need to submit this to crack.sh is we write nt-hash and then paste it this value here. So I'm going to do that. And that says it right here, right? So on the main page, get cracking and then you can submit it here. It says it's free. There are also, um, if you have another hash format or token format, you have to pay, um, but this one is free. So you just enter your email address, submit, and then you get the um, response um, via our email. So I already did that. And basically they sent you this hash back and we can actually use that one because it's the system hash to dump all the other hashes from the machine now. So I'm going to use secret stump here with the machine account, which is just the name of the box with the dollar sign at the end, and then this hash we got from the cracking. The reason we do this is because um, we can't really get a session on the box um, with the machine account hash. Um, pretty sure it doesn't work with WinRM or PSXEC or WMI exec and so on. We actually need the administrator hash. Here we go. Um, you can see the administrator hash. So the only thing left to do is to use uh, WinRM with this hash to connect as administrator and we can read the root flag. That's it for the box. Um, thank you for watching and see you next week.